What happens if we have the wrong cam in our small block Chevy? Can we advance it? Can we retard it? Can we make it better? In this video, we're gonna take a look at cam timing on a tunnel ram small block Chevy. What happens if we advance the cam? What happens if we retard the cam? What happens if the cam timing is already pretty good? And as a bonus test, I also removed the mufflers on our tunnel ram small block Chevy. Those results are definitely gonna surprise you. I changed the power a lot, but not where you think. Let's find out what happened. To run this test on advancing, retarding the camshaft and finding out how it affects the power curve, we set up a small block Chevy. And actually, this was the original Gladiator motor from West Tech, which was a 355-inch motor. It was like 10 to 1. This thing had been run hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of runs. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if this thing actually had a 1,000 pulls on it. I need to go back through all the data at West Tech and find out how much the original Gladiator actually had because we used it basically for everything, intake tests and cylinder head tests and obviously these cam timing tests, nitrous, you know, all kinds of stuff. This thing was just basically flogged mer mercilessly. And because they changed the oil regularly, it had synthetic oil, that Lucas oil stuff in it. They ran it all the time. You know, this thing, they treated it right, but they did use it an awful lot. So we use this <laughs> in this particular instance. We equipped the motor with, it had a set of AFR 195 heads on it, which always work well. It had a, you know, a healthy camshaft and it was an extreme energy 282 hydraulic roller cam and that was a 510 520 lift split a 230 236 degree duration split at 110 degree lobe separation angle we also ran this thing with a tunnel ram and two 600 hollies on it obviously an msd billet distributor in the inch and three quarter dyno headers that we normally run but the interesting thing is and on the camshaft we did not degree the cam um, after putting it in and the reason that i didn't do that is I purposely wanted to make sure that we put the cam in the way that 95% of the people that do a cam swap put it in. So you'll put the cam in and just line it up dot to dot and run it. Now it is important to note that there are several things that we don't know about the camshaft. So when somebody puts a camshaft in, um, they may or may not have adjustable uh, cam sprockets to adjust the cam anyway. So they just put it in and run it the way that it is. They also don't know a lot of times how much advance is built into the camshaft. Like did did the and and when I'm talking about what kind of gains we get from advancing retarding a cam, maybe the cam already is advanced. It, it's it's to a point where you're not going to gain anything else from advancing it. Maybe it's only going to gain from retarding it. It depends on what the motor wants and what the cam specs are. That's going to determine whether we get gains from advancing or retarding the cam. Because typically, traditionally, if you advance the cam, you pick up low speed power. If you retard the cam, you pick up top end power, and usually there's a trade off on the other end for any kind of gains that you get. But <laughs> the cam timing has, to, you have to know what the cam timing is and whether or not it's going to benefit. Maybe it already has a really tight LSA, maybe it has all the advanced ground into it, and it doesn't, it's not going to respond anymore. Maybe it's only going to lose power from advancing it. So it's important to note that's why we test these things to find out whether or not they actually do anything. So on this 355 equipped with that camshaft and the AFR heads and with our cam just installed at zero basically and we had a uh, an external belt drive on this that allowed us to advance and retard the cam fairly easily on the dyno which you know obviously made the testing much easier but equipped with the cam at its indicated 0, 0.0 degrees basically on our uh, cam sprocket this comp cam uh, with the comp cam our 350 produced 490 horsepower, 489.8, and 448 foot-pounds of torque. And if you guys are interested in what this tunnel ram did compared to a single plane and a dual plane on the small block, I also ran that test so you guys can take a look at it. But this thing produced 490 horsepower and 448 foot-pounds of torque with the cam at its zero point. So here's what happened when we advanced the cam by four degrees. You can see it kind of did what we would expect from a typical cam advance. It picked up power down low, and as a matter of fact, it picked up a little bit of power all the way out to 5,500, but there was a fairly sizable loss in power out at the top, which tells us that this cam probably already had about four degrees of advance ground into it, and that's not unusual for manufacturers to do that. 
they usually put advanced ground into them because they're trying to make up for the inevitable chain stretch and stuff when they when the slack gets in the chain tends to retard the cam and then they if they put this advance into it you're still kind of going back to the zero point which is you know usually the uh, reason that they give for that so this thing already has obviously more than the amount of advance that it needs now the ideal situation and this is why that manufacturers go to the trouble of in modern engines to have variable cam timing because they can advance it retard it under different conditions and not just wide open throttle usually at part throttle and for emissions and stuff but swinging the cam around has a decided effect on the power curve as we see here and so it can be beneficial which is why VVT cams are so popular so now let's take a look at what happened when we retarded so after running our camshaft test testing it in the zero point and then advancing the cam we obviously we're going to go the other way and swing it four degrees and retard it so here is what happened this is our zero position our small block Chevy making our tunnel ramp small block Chevy making 499 and 448 foot pounds here's what happened when we retarded the cam by four degrees and as you can see it did pick up power at the top but only at the very top from 6100 on out to 65 the gains might have gotten a little bit more had we revved this motor out and it tended to make peak power you know at a couple rpm a couple hundred rpm higher with the retarded cam timing there was a slight trade-off down low as you can see from 3000 to 36 or 3700 rpm slight trade-off in torque from retarding the cam and, and since we didn't get big gains either well we got a big loss from the advancing cam it shows us that the cam that particular cam those cam timing events and where they have it placed and whether it's advanced or retarded it's fairly optimum in that uh <laughs> for our combination just the way that it is and that's not unusual because the cam guys are really pretty good at what they do now, advancing and retarding the cam, you can do that to kind of tailor it to maybe better adjust for your particular combination. And you might see a little bit here and a little bit there, especially if you're trying to tailor the power curve to a specific RPM range. If you're drag racing, maybe you only care about power from 5,000 to 7,000 RPM, in which case retarding the cam, if it picks up a little bit of power, maybe you can get something there and you're not you're willing to trade off the stuff down low because you're never there except after you except when you launch the car so there are instances and maybe if you're driving around you want the drivability maybe you're more interested in advancing the cam and picking up the power down low and you don't really care about the stuff out at the top so degreeing the cam or, or <laughs> advancing or retarding the cam is kind of like fine tuning you're not going to pick up usually big power gains but you might pick up some and they might work well for your application. Let's get to our next test because this one's really interesting. If you want to make a big change in the power curve, just take the mufflers off. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So our final test on the small block Chevy was actually to pull the muffler off. And while most people think, okay, we're going to pull the muffler off, we're going to reduce like an exhaust restriction, and we're going to pick up power. And typically what you would see from something like that, if that were the case, is that you'd pick up power at the top where flow is most important. But taking the muffler off in this instance really had nothing to do with exhaust flow. <laughs> I'll show you what I mean. So this is our combination with the cam set at zero and our tunnel ram, our small block, you know, 490 horsepower and 447 foot-pounds of torque. As you can see, we have the long tube kind of sprint car type headers on this thing, and we have a muffler attached to the header. So here's what happened after we just pulled the muffler off and basically ran it with an open header. And as you know, guys at the drag strip, this is very common for guys to run open headers because, you know, it's loud and it sounds good and open headers must flow better and make a lot more power, right? Well, here's what happens when we ran it with no muffler, when we remove the muffler from this combination. So that's in red. <laughs> so here's an interesting thing. This actually has nothing to do with flow or the muffler being a restriction and actually has everything to do with the length of the muffler this is a, an extension this is basically the muffler was acting as a collector extension lengthening the collector extension on the header and so this is what we typically see this all the time so it doesn't matter whether you do this with a muffler or an extension of tubing um, this is the same kind of thing so we, we lost a ton of torque I mean by removing the muffler our torque dropped from 411 foot-pounds down to 377 foot-pounds at 3,600 RPM. And as you can see, it lost torque from 3,000 all the way out past 4,000 RPM. But then it gained a little bit. 
from 4100 out to 4900 RPM, it actually gained a little bit. So torque picked up from 424 foot pounds up to 441 foot. So we gained about 20 foot pounds in that area. And then from 5,000 on out, there was essentially no change because there's no reflected wave change happening out past that. But you can see if you were to <laughs> be judging your 60 foot time and your launch and your converter, this would throw everything off. I mean, this RPM range is kind of critical for the launch RPM for these things. And if you all of a sudden are missing 30 or 40 foot pounds of torque, it's going to have a decided effect on your 60 foot time and on your converter, all of that stuff. So make sure that <laughs> having that right collector length extension definitely has an effect on power. And, if, and looking at this, it would be kind of cool to have <laughs> a, an extension that like shortens up in itself like a sliding tube. So you could have the right length here from 3000 to 4000 RPM, and then you could make it shorter from 4000 to you know, almost 5,000 RPM, and then after that, it really doesn't matter. But that would be cool to have a sliding section of exhaust so that you could get the most out of both of these power curves, which is what we want. <laughs> if a little bit's good, then even more is better. So that was kind of a cool test, shortening the muffler, or taking the muffler off and shortening the exhaust. And this is what happens, like I said, we've done this a ton of times on Fords and Chevys and Dodges and almost everything, and this is what we see. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what'd you think about our test on cam timing on our tunnel ram small block Chevy. First of all, tunnel ram, super awesome, even on a small block Chevy. But on our cam timing, pretty typical stuff. Advance the cam, pick up power down low. Retard the cam, pick up power up top. But as we expect from comp cams, our cam was already pretty well dialed in just as it came. But we can nitpick a little bit here and a little bit there. Especially important if you're trying to favor one part of the power curve. Like I said, if you're drag racing, you only want top end, maybe just a little bit up there. If you're just driving around and don't care about the top end, you're looking at bottom end, adjust the curve down there. That's the nice thing about cam time. But what about that muffler test? That was super cool. Normally, mufflers, exhaust flow, pick up power at the top, if at all. But taking the muffler off, shortening that collector extension, big change in power down low. I'd sure like to have that sliding adjustable collector extension. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Come on, guys, help me out. I'll keep testing.